However, unfortunately, such is the nature of things. Ladder of display here. Sometimes one or two old friends aren't here anymore. And the first four vehicles that have come into the ring, just going past me here now. Next one. Oh, what a lovely horn. Do it again. There are two ones, Alex. There we are, the rare much. series ones. And the Weeksley Banks Caravan one. These were all cars that belonged to a colleague who we knew and loved very well, Heath Smith. He said he didn't want any fuss when he left us a few months ago, sadly. So I don't want any fuss, I don't want an obituary. But I'm sorry, Heath, these are murderers of people. We're not going to let you go without paying tribute. So, the first four here are vehicles associated with our good friend, Pete. However, we're not going to dwell on the sad side. We're just reveling in the marvellous time that we've had meeting up with our old friends again. Now, with all these various Land Rovers coming into the ring from all different ages, it would be quite impossible in the time we've got to talk about the Series history one. of every single one. So what I'm going to do is to train you, our ringside audience, to be your own Land Rover spotters with a few little recognition points. But the first thing I'm going to tell you if you're going to be a Land Rover spotter, do not on any account call the old ones defenders. Yeah, yes. They are not all Yeah, not until defenders. 1990. In fact, the defender name came along in the late 90s when Land Rover decided to put out the Discovery and they needed a new name. So they brought out the Fender. But all these older ones are Land Rovers. Oh, I think it was 1990. The Discovery came out in 89 originally. Like TTL 492 coming past here. We call them Series 1s nowadays. They weren't called Series 1s when they came out. The Rover company just called them Land Rover. But then when the Series 2 came out, and I'll tell you how to recognize one in a minute, they needed a name, so they became known as Series 1. So, the very oldest ones here, and I'm going to point out the pale green one there, which is fifth from the right, next to the one that's just pulling up. Of course, that is the oldest one that's here. If you want to identify the first Land Rovers, look at the back of the driver's door. If it slopes forward, the that's because the wheelbase is so short, only 80 inches, like the original wartime Jeep on which the first was placed. That was as long as they could make it, so the door had to be sloping in order to make the fit it into the wheelbase. Early Range Rover. The farmers soon said, hang on a minute, it's not long enough. We can't get enough in the back, we can only get two feet and five sheep and a couple of bales on the back. Can you make it longer? So then they made the long wheelbase one, or the medium wheelbase one, which was 86 at first and then 88, so they could put a diesel engine in. But even then, that was a bit Military short. Land Rovers as well. So, like the lovely, um, what colour do you call it, sir? Uh, French or your country. Well, we'll call it a kind of beige. Next to it, the lovely grey uh, pickup. They were then given a longer wheelbase of 107, 109 inches. But they're all series ones. And they, the giveaway is that they are flat sided. From the roof of the frame gutters, right the way down to the bottom sills, they are flat. But then in 1958, the stylists wanted to have a go. And they thought, we can't have all this terribly unsightly flat side and showing the off the exhaust pipe underneath and everything. So that's when, like 
land rovers, but at the same time we would like to build them. Can you let us build our own version of the land rover? That's the Minerva company. And so these here, they're all steel bodies. So you don't ever talk about the tin worm, which are anywhere near the Minerva owner, because they have to be kept in pristine condition to stop them rusting. But they are getting to be very, very popular because they're now being released from army use and uh, a very good way of getting a first generation land rover that has to be done in Mars. Right, what else can I tell you? The whole point about land rovers is traditionally in the past they were working vehicles. This one I'm standing on was a civil defence vehicle. But the SXF series, which is one of the highest number of preserved vehicles of 66 years old, which are still on the British roads, because they were the last one to be ordered by the civil defence. They did a few hundred miles of civil defence exercises. They were never needed for real, thank goodness, because the point of this one was it was a reconnaissance vehicle. And if somebody dropped a bomb from somewhere, the reconnaissance vehicle, the team of four, would come out and they would come in towards the city on four converging roads and they had radio contact and they had guider counters. And if the guider counter went off, they would stop and say, right, this is the boundary. And that way they would establish boundaries. Now, thank heaven, they were never, ever needed for that use. So my database is now 235 SXF on the books, and not all still on the road. But what else can we do with the land road? We can turn it into a recovery truck here. And once the coast is gone, we can go into the land road magazine three or four months ago. There again, that's our work in the vehicle. Of course, the ministry. Uh, the, uh, the army, uh, they also needed a great number of vehicles. And uh, Tommy here is making rude finger gestures at me to talk about his RAF crash wagon. No, in fact it was an RAF police wagon, left-hand drive, because did it see um, service in Germany? So we did, was it in Germany, yours? Yeah, left-hand drive, and this was the RAF military police. I'm at that man down there. Coming along to the left here, Tommy just to the left of the coach's garage. You bought it in one. Germany? And then a little bit more to the left of that, one green and one blue. What are generally called lightweights. Big misnomer, they're not lightweights. They're actually slightly heavier. Leaving the ring here at Massam Land Rovers. Both the ships from over the years since 1948. Prize at the end. Of course, and some of you have had a chance to keep the awards for the last three years. But never been on. Still the winning for you back there, right? Anyway. Uh, he's had a few of the work horses as the it's commentator here. Through that one, he's telling you.